When he was a little boy, Vico was in an accident with his family, their car fell off a bridge and his father died. Years later, as a teenager Vico still has nightmares about it and has developed a paralyzing fear of heights. One morning he doesn't want to go to school because they'll be going on an excursion to the mountains to watch the solar eclipse, and he's afraid his phobia will kick in. His mom makes him change his mind by promising his father will always be there protecting him. Meanwhile 1000 years in the past, a shaman is using his magic to start a spell that will help him find the stone of power. The fire in front of him forms the shape of a dragon head, which matches the image on Vico's jacket. Speaking of Vico, he's actually having fun on the excursion with his best friend Vovchik and a toy plane he's built himself. Vitko has also brought a bunch of fireworks to light at the end of the day, and Vovchik has brought his very own megaphone to fool around with. After walking through the forest for a while, the group needs to cross a bridge to reach the mountaintop, but Vitko freezes in the middle of it because of his phobia and Vovchik has to drag him back to the beginning. The entire class begins laughing at Vitko for what they consider a silly fear and the fact his pants are wet, thinking he peed himself when actually it was the water bottle in his pocket. Humiliated Vitko runs back into the forest and hides behind a cliff. Vovchik comes after him to remind him they don't need such friends, but their chat is interrupted when the eclipse finally begins and an earthquake suddenly hits the area. Vovchik falls off the edge and holds onto the rocks just in time, but he won't be able to stay like that for long. Vitko wants to help him yet his phobia keeps him frozen, and before he can think of something to do, a magic portal opens behind him and absorbs Vitko together with the megaphone. When Vitko opens his eyes again, he finds himself on the same cliff but in the past, a thousand years back to be exact. Nearby, there's a man in armor called Olishko picking up flowers for the girl he likes when he's suddenly attacked by a group of enemy humans. Defeating these soldiers is easy for Olishko and his sword skills, but things get complicated when he's attacked by their leader Andako, who quickly overpowers him and brings more soldiers to capture Olishko. At that moment, Vico trips while trying to get a better look and accidentally activates the megaphone, distracting the soldiers and giving Olishko the chance to escape. Luckily Olishko has a horse and is able to pick up Vico to take him away with him. When they reach the river, Olishko summons the spirit that lives there to form a path for him to pass, and this path disappears once Olishko and Vitko have crossed, making Andako and the Cumans give up for now and leave. Olishko takes Vitko to his village, which is protected by a stronghold that he wasn't supposed to leave so Olishko gets scolded by the town leaders for disobeying orders. Vitko's clothes and manner of speaking are seen as weird by the villagers, and thinking he may be a spy, the leaders lock him up until they decide what to do. Meanwhile Andako goes to see the shaman to discuss the failure of their mission, but the shaman surprisingly reacts happily when he hears about the boy in weird clothes. Since the dragon on his jacket matches the one in the shaman's visions, it means Vitko is the person that will guide them to the stone of power. Sometime later, Vitko is visited by Alenka, a young girl that brings him milk and makes sure he's doing fine, she also confirms he's in the year 1120. Before Vitko can ask more, Olishko comes to pick him up and take him to the river for a test, the water spirit will decide if he's a spy or he's trustworthy. Vitko is thrown into the river with his hands tied and for a moment thinks he's going to die, but the river spirit considers him worthy and throws him out without hurting him. He may still be seen as a weirdo by the villagers, but at least now Vitko is accepted as one of them and gets to meet the leaders properly. There's the wise elder Ofsi and, more shockingly, the fighters Ilya and Dobrynya, putting their names together with Olishko makes Vitko realize these are three mighty Bogotar warriors from the legends. They don't believe Vico when he says he's from the future until he uses the megaphone as proof, and when he asks for a way to return to his own time, Ofsi promises to look into it. In the meantime, Vico will stay with Rosanka and her mother, and Olishko takes him there as an excuse to talk to Rosanka since she's the girl he's been picking flowers for. Later in the evening, Ofsi comes with some news after talking to the river spirit, there are two ways for Vico to return to the future. He can either wait for another eclipse that will reopen the portal, or search for a mage that will teach him how to open it by force. Olishko knows where to find a mage but he isn't sure if Vico should go because mages put people through very tough trials before helping them, so Vico offers a deal, if Olishko trains him, he'll gift him his megaphone. Olishko accepts and Vico spends a few days in the village, learning to use the sword, the bow, and just general tips on how to defend himself. He also gets to meet the stronghold's watchtower, which is so tall that it can help them keep an eye on the whole kingdom, and Tuarin, a human prisoner that steals a pin from Vico because he's obsessed with gifts. In return for his teachings, Olishko gets to play with all kinds of modern objects like chewing bubblegum and taking pictures with a cell phone, he also learns that in the future he's a fairy tale knight. Once Vitko's training is complete, Olishko gets the megaphone and in exchange gives Vitko a map to find the mage, although he must promise not to tell the leaders he's going away since leaving the stronghold is forbidden and that's why Olishko can't go with him. Later that day, Olishko visits Rosanka again, using the megaphone to get her to leave the house without her mother seeing them, but she isn't impressed by the fact one day he's going to be famous. The next morning, the human shaman puts a spell on a raven to spy on Vitko, who has left the village and is now crossing the forest. 
He isn't sure if he's following Olishko's map correctly, but fortunately he comes across Alenka while she's gathering mushrooms and convinces her to be his guide since she seems to know the area well. Without noticing the raven that is following them, the teens walk for a few hours until they enter a passage between two huge rock walls, and Vitko suddenly finds himself in a desolate land, which is an illusion cast by the mage. Vitko can hear the mage's voice speaking in his mind, asking him for a test if he wants knowledge, he must confess his greatest fear, and lying would only get him punishment. Without hesitation, Vitko shares the story of the car accident, his fear of heights, and the fact this fear got in the way of saving Vovchik. The mage approves of the boy for having accepted his own weakness and shares the information he's looking for. The stone of power that will take him back to the future can be found where the wingless make their nests, and it'll be seen when he straddles the wind. Only someone able to touch another heart with his own can do it, but this power can also spread pain and misery around. As soon as the mage finishes saying the riddle, Vitko returns to the forest and learns Alenka never noticed he had been gone. However she does believe him when he shares his experience and guesses that the nest for the wingless must refer to Stork Village. They make it to this village a few hours later, and to find the stone, Vitko uses a kite that he makes on the spot to straddle the wind as the riddle said. The kite falls into the water, and Vitko jumps in to follow the string until he finally finds the stone of power. The raven sees all this and as soon as the news reaches the shaman, he sends a bunch of cumin soldiers to steal the stone. These warriors are ruthless and not only do they kidnap Vitko and Alenka, they also kill the villagers and light their houses on fire. Fortunately thanks to the watchtower, the soldiers at the stronghold learn about this attack and immediately send their own warriors, led by Ilya, Dobrynya, and Olishko. They beat up the Cumans easily with their superior sword skills, but there's an archer hidden in the woods that they can't see. Vitko does see him though, and he uses his own bow to get him before he can shoot a single arrow. Once everyone returns to the stronghold, Vitko and Alenka are scolded for leaving, but at least Ilya promises to guide Vitko the next day so he can find the place where he can use the stone. Meanwhile Andako is furious with the shaman since his plan made them lose an entire unit of soldiers, and threatens with killing him if he doesn't get him the stone next time. The following morning, Vitko is taken to the rock that brought him to the past, but putting the stone of power on it does nothing. Vitko thinks it has to do with the part of the riddle mentioning hearts, but Ofsi thinks they need to wait for a storm because the god that made that stone was the muster of thunder and that may activate its power. When they return to the stronghold, Vitko follows Ofsi to his home and discovers the old man as an inventor that is trying to make a flying machine. Obviously his knowledge is lacking, thus Vitko takes the chance to teach him about aerodynamics, using a paper plane as an example. From then on, Vitko and Ofsi work together on making functional wings, but Vitko also spends some time with Alenka, who shares local legends with him, including one about star-crossed lovers that leave behind a stone heart. To thank her for everything, Vitko gifts her a cute little paper bird. While the shaman prepares a new spell for his next plan, Ilya and his men manage to capture a human soldier and interrogate him until they learn Andako knows about the stone, which means they need to hide it to keep it safe. Ofsi thinks the best hiding spot is on top of the watchtower and when he notices Vitko doesn't want to go up there with him, he reminds him that confronting your fears is important and that Vitko will always have the village's support to rely on. Riding the elevator is never wrecking, but Vitko manages to make it all the way to the top and start controlling his fear at least a little bit. Ofsi hides the stone inside an old rock and this is seen by the shaman's magic, who decides the time has come. A few hours later, a storm finally comes, and Alenka tries to tell Vitko she doesn't want him to leave but he doesn't get the metaphor she's using. Soon the rain starts including hail too, which hits Turin in his cage and makes Vitko feel bad for him, so he grabs some old sailcloth and covers the cage with it to protect the prisoner. Alenka is impressed by Vitko's bravery and rewards him with a kiss on his cheek. That night, a flash of lightning hits the stronghold wall and breaks some stone that falls near the cage, Turin takes advantage of this and uses this debris to break the lock, escaping under the protection of the rain. Turin travels all the way to the Cuman camp, where it's revealed he's Andako's brother, yet Andako doesn't want anything to do with such a deformed beast. The gifts Turin have brought for him don't impress him because they're silly things like a chicken, but Andako quickly changes his mind when the shaman notices Turin has also brought the stone of power. However the stone still hasn't been activated and the shaman fails when he tries to use it, so he informs Andako that they'll need the person that retrieved the stone from the river to make it work. The next morning, people in the stronghold find out that Turin and the stone are gone. Attacking the Cuman camp would be a bad idea that would get them all killed, so Vitko and Ofsi concentrate on finishing the flying machine because it's their only hope to recover the stone. Sometime later, while Ofsi and Alenka go out to gather berries and some mud to paint the flying machine, they're ambushed by a group of Cuman warriors that kidnap Alenka. Ofsi tries to defend himself, but there are too many of them and he ends up wounded. He does manage to make it back to the village, but he only can tell everyone about what happened to Alenka before dying. Speaking of Alenka, she's taken to Andako, who steals her paper bird and sends it with a raven as a message to Vitko. Dangerous as it may be, Vitko still decides to go alone to the Cuman camp, where he's asked to activate the stone if he wants Alenka to live. 
Pretending to know what he's doing, Vico pulls out the fireworks from his bag and lights them up as he says random phrases from his English class to make it seem like he's speaking a mysterious mythical language. Then he throws the fireworks at the soldiers to create chaos and confusion around the camp, which allows him to grab Alenka and run to the horses. Unfortunately before they can escape, they're captured again by Andico, who gives Vico one last chance to activate the stone or he'll kill them both. Vico doesn't know what to do until he recites the riddle in his head again and realizes heart to heart means the magic of the human bond. He approaches Alenka and when they hold the stone together, the magic inside it finally comes to life. After the shaman takes the stone away to power up their army, Andico orders Turin to kill the teens, but he can't bring himself to do it because he remembers how kind Vitko had been to him. Instead, Turin frees Vitko and Alenka and gets them a horse, and such a gesture earns him a piece of candy from Vitko as thanks. Turin loves gifts and tries to impress his brother with the candy, but Andico ends up killing him for what he considers a great betrayal. The next morning, Vitko and Alenka make it back to the stronghold and warn everyone about the incoming Cuman attack. All the soldiers and the three Bogotar warriors get ready to defend their home, but nothing prepares them for the sight that comes with the Cuman army, it's a giant golem that the shaman is controlling with the power of the stone. The stronghold fires its catapults but none of the projectiles is strong enough to hurt the golem, in fact the big guy takes one of the boulders and shoots it back, breaking the gate. Noticing how big and heavy the golem is, Olishko gets an idea and leaves the stronghold to make the golem chase him, expertly dodging every slow attack until he makes the golem trip and fall into the river, where the water spirit captures it. Olishko falls into the river as well, causing Rosanka to get worried and run to the shore to cry for him, but it turns out he's just fine and Rosanka rewards his heroics with a kiss. At that moment, a new eclipse begins, so Vitko says goodbye to Alenka and gets a horse in order to reach the rock with the portal quickly. Unfortunately the eclipse is also seen as a sign by Andico, who orders his army to take advantage of the poor light and attack the stronghold. Under the Bogotar trio's wise leadership, the villagers defend their home from the Cuman army to the point where even the women manage to land a hit or two. Finding himself at disadvantage, Andico decides to leave with his soldiers before they're all killed, but the shaman isn't ready to give up yet, he still has control over the stone and manages to bring the golem out of the water for a new attack. Noticing the return of the golem even at a distance, Vitko decides to come back to the stronghold and share a plan to defeat it. Ofsi's words of support are still strong in his mind and help him overcome his fear, allowing Vitko to quickly take the elevator to the top of the watchtower and climb on the flying machine, which flies as smoothly as it was designed for. At the same time the golem reaches the stronghold to begin destroying it, Vitko lands on the cliff where the shaman is standing, pushing him off to his death and finally recovering the stone of power. Andako arrives at the cliff as well, intending to steal the stone, so Vitko throws it in the water to stop it from falling in the wrong hands and causes the golem to disintegrate. A furious Andiko wants to kill Vitko for his indolence, but Olishko arrives just in time to fight him again in a fierce battle between master swordsmen. Since Andiko doesn't have his army to support him this time, he falls to his death the same way the shaman did. There's no time to celebrate though because the eclipse is about to end, so Olishko takes Vitko to the forest to find the portal on the rock. Before Vitko leaves, Alenka comes to say goodbye as well and kisses him, promising she'll always wait for him. As soon as he enters the portal, Vitko is transported back to the present, where Vovchik is still hanging on the edge of the cliff. Now that he isn't scared of heights anymore, Vitko is capable of saving him, and such heroics earn him an ovation from his class. A year later, Vitko's mother surprises him with an ancient book he's been looking for since his eclipse excursion. By following the information in the text, Vitko manages to find the stone heart from the story, and by touching it, he can feel Alenka's presence in the past touching it as well. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.